and McPartland must be allowed to move on from his horror year with Anne-Marie Corbett. Just imagine, for a second, the reaction had Anne McPartland returned to work on Britain's Got Talent last week without explaining exactly what went on inside his head over the past two years to result in his calamitous drink-drive crash. I have zero doubt there would have been cries from the usual suspects that he was showing arrogance by not apologizing publicly again, acknowledging just how much damage he could have done and sharing his inspiring story of recovery. That's why the telly legend decided to sit down with me hours before he went on camera for the first time in 10 months, to open his heart and share his demons. The message was powerful, men in their 40s, even northern blokes like him, battling with addiction or mental health issues need to talk about their inner struggles and start to realize it's okay to admit you're not okay. The unfair suggestion that Ant avoided talking about the victims of his crash is simply not true. He did not back away in confronting the horrific reality of just how bad that day last March could have been, looking me in the eyes and saying with horror, I thank God every night that no one was seriously injured in that crash. Because we would be having a very different interview today if that was the case. Immediately after the accident, while he was sitting in a police cell, his mind was dominated by thoughts of the welfare of his mum, who had been in the car, and the others involved. He recalled how relieved he was when a policeman informed him those in the other car had only suffered from minor injuries and pleaded guilty. He accepted District Judge Barbara Barnes, who made an example of him because of his wealth and fame, giving him an unprecedented £86,000 fine and, more devastatingly, telling him, you're no longer a man of good character. He then apologized publicly to the victims, and the nation, on the court steps. However, what was just as important for Ant and I during the interview was exploring the issue of just how and why one of the most successful people in showbiz could end up in this precarious position. He told in emotional detail how his prescription pill addiction and alcohol dependency was caused by a deep underlying unhappiness in his life, which became a hidden depression. For years, he was only trying to make others happy and, having made the decision to divorce his wife of 11 years Lisa Armstrong, he was battling mental trauma. Now that doesn't excuse drink driving, and Ant is not trying to suggest for a second it does, but there is a responsibility on all of us to try to understand how and why mental health issues can lead to so many problems in society around crime, alcohol and drugs. Oh, and by the way, to suggest Ant shouldn't talk about his new love Anne Marie Corbett, the woman who has helped more than any other to turn his life around, is absurd. Sniping media critics suggesting Ant and December didn't deserve their 18th consecutive and TA for best presenter are missing the point. Probably on purpose. It's untrue to say Ant wasn't on TV last year. He hosted all but two episodes of Saturday Night Takeaway and all Britain's Got Talent's audition episodes. But the award was also in recognition of Declan Donnelly who, for the first time in his career, was left flying solo for the rest of SNT and BGT and then had to strike up a partnership with Holly Willoughby on I'm a Celebrity. Ant and December aren't like any other telepresenters, they're treated like an extended member of the family by millions of their fans. It's a unique public adoration that comes from watching two ordinary lads grow up to become men before our eyes through our most popular TV shows. Of course, there are the Twitter keyboard warriors who think Ant should be banished to the Michael Barrymore land of teleanonymity but they are a bitter minority. As the victory proved this week, most of us support Ant. 